Welcome to Spoilerful Reviews, where we're going to be talking about story, gameplay, style, and time value of various video games. Happy holidays, everybody! You know, I thought that wearing the sweater was going to be a good idea, but I'm not too sure after all this editing is going to be hard. So as we get ready to celebrate this festive time of year, I thought it'd be a great idea to remember... Nightmares. So today we're going to be talking about Little Nightmares and its DLC, The Secrets of the Maw. Little Nightmares is developed by Tarsier Studios and came out back in 2017, uh, with its three DLC levels coming out later in 2017 and eventually finishing up in 2018. This game is a puzzle platformer mixed with some really spooky ambiance in a creepy setting. And without further ado, let's get into Little Nightmares and The Secrets of the Maw DLC. So first up, let's go through the stories of Little Nightmares and what I thought about it. The story is presented in a fairly linear fashion and so it's pretty straightforward. No crazy lore dumps and notes or audio logs just found throughout the story. I love that. You play as a little girl named Six in a little nice yellow raincoat, exploring the Maw, which appears to be some sort of giant underwater resort for the people of this planet. She starts out in a prison and starts to make her escape out of the Maw, although it's not really clear why or what exactly is going on. Six runs her at the prison, seeing other children behind glass windows, and encounters a bunch of weird monster leeches that try and catch her while she's running about. Able to escape the prison, she gets really hungry, and just in the nick of time, one of the kids throws some bread to her, upon which she really monstrously devours it. Six then enters into the crew quarters where she runs into the janitor, named Roger, who is a blind man with really long, creepy arms. After giving Roger the runaround, she eventually severs his arms off with an elevator door and is able to escape the crew quarters. Then Six is able to see that children are being wrapped up and sent to the kitchen, which is the next area she goes to and not a great look for the moth. Before entering into the kitchen, she gets really hungry again though, this time devouring a rat that she encounters and it's pretty gross. Dancing around the twin chefs who continuously try and turn her into a meal, Six successfully makes her way to the hall, only to see really obese guests funneling their way through into the maw. Six has to avoid the guests as they try and grab an eater, but she is able to successfully avoid the World War Z style hungry people. Getting to the end of that section, she runs into a gnome who offers her a sausage. But as her hunger starts to get overwhelming, she turns and eats the little gnome when he's not really expecting it. Six then follows the woman who is dressed up like a geisha up into her quarters. Not the best idea if you ask me, but regardless, we're here. After being caught by the woman, she then pursues Six throughout the dark quarters and broken mirrors of her own quarters in the mall. This is definitely like the spookiest part of the game and it kind of got me scared a couple times here. However, Six finds and then uses a little unbroken mirror and the woman's reflection seems to hurt her, giving Six the upper hand. But then Six gets hungry again, this time chomping down on the woman's neck. She absorbs her powers, then proceeds to walk out of the mall with a dark aura surrounding her, absorbing the life force of any of the residents who get close to her. And she gets to the top of the lighthouse, escaping the mall. It's a very creepy but powerful ending, honestly. It's very bizarre, too. But okay, now that we know kind of what happened with Six, let's talk about the DLC, The Secrets of the Ma, and what kind of happened with the story there. So The Secrets of the Ma takes place alongside the main story, but this time you play as the runaway kid, navigating through three different levels. He starts out escaping the prison, much like Six did, but this time he, instead he goes to the depths of the Ma, which is flooded with water and has a water witch, named Granny, of course, hanging out down in there. After avoiding the granny countless times, the kid eventually knocks the TV into the water, electrifying it and saving himself from the granny. However, he gets spotted by Roger and is put into a cage and delivered to the kitchen. Before he gets to the kitchen, he is able to break free of his own packaging and then plummets himself down into the engine of the maw. In the engine, he starts rallying all of his gnome buddies, while dodging Roger of course, and is able to power a furnace, which helps him get back to the surface. But on his way up, the kid finds himself on top of the elevator with the geisha woman. We kind of know where this is going, don't we? He then finds himself in her residence, much like Six will a little bit later on in this timeline right now. And then here he is able to solve a bunch of puzzles, upon which he is avoiding a number of shadow children before seeing the woman herself. Her face is all disfigured and destroyed, thus explaining why Six is able to use the mirror against her in the ending of the original game. Unfortunately, the woman is able to capture the kid, and then the biggest twist of the game turns him into a gnome, 
meaning that all of the gnomes that you encountered used to be children that kind of got caught by the geisha woman and she turned them into these gnomes. And then the kid, now as a gnome, descends back into the main area where all of the big guests are eating. But the DLC ends with a little bit of a twist ending. He's standing around with a sausage in the same room that Six eats the gnome, implying that when Six ate the gnome, it was actually the runaway kid, leading to a little bit unfortunate of an ending for him. So overall, I really liked the story of Little Nightmares. I thought actually that the DLC helped enrich the environment a little bit more just because the main storyline, you're just kind of running through it as six. But there were so many of these little creepy elements that kind of hint towards something bigger that it kept me intrigued throughout. Once again, I did like how the Secrets of the Maw ending tied it back into the main story, even though it's kind of adjacent. So overall, I think that, yeah, like the story of Little Nightmares is very well put together. It might be short, but it is really good. Okay, so the gameplay of Little Nightmares is similar to most 2.5D platforming games. That's why we've broken the second dimension into the second and a half dimension. I mean, even looking at the gameplay, you can kind of see how it's based around puzzles and different environments, but it's not quite 2D and it's not quite 3D at the same time, hence the whole half dimension thing. To break down the game's acts, there's five levels in the main game and there's three levels in the DLC. The main game's focus is more on just running through the levels and solving a puzzle here and there, and honestly, it kind of works. It's more or less similar to the original Super Mario Brothers, where basically you're going from point A to point B, and you're just along for the ride. The puzzles aren't too complicated and can be a little repetitive at times, but the different environments make navigating through it very interesting and enjoyable and keeping you engaged. It's really fun and exciting. The scene where the guests are chasing after you really makes your heartbeat rise. And when you're going through the woman's chamber, I genuinely felt scared. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I screamed at one of the points when she just appeared out of the fuck nowhere. But when you look at the DLC, you can really tell that they pushed it into the puzzle solving elements. Each three of the stages is more focused on exploration of a very specific environment solving puzzles within it in this sort of centralized main area. It caught me off guard going straight from the main game to the DLC, but I think that it really made the DLC stand out as like part two of the game. The puzzles are a lot more well thought out and genuinely had me scratching my head trying to figure out how I was going to advance to the next level. There are a couple of gripes I have with them though. There was this one thing where all you had to do was stand on a very specific wooden board and jump a bunch that you were supposed to break and like how the hell are you supposed to figure that out? For game design, without teaching the player beforehand, these types of things can get very frustrating, especially when the levels involve more backtracking and puzzle solving type stuff. The physics engine was also pretty cool to me, and as a platformer overall, it just feels really solid when you interact with objects in your environment, like throwing music boxes to distract Roger, or pushing a minecart with the help of your little gnome buddies. It just feels well done. Also something that I like is if you get close enough to them, you can hug the little gnomes. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't realize this until halfway through, but it's a small little touch that made me feel good about myself. Overall, this is a pretty solid platformer. I think it may have worked to its detriment for the main campaign because it was so fast paced, but I like how it was balanced out by the in-depth puzzle solving introduced in the DLC. So back when Little Nightmares was announced, its style was kind of what had everybody talking. It feels like a child's nightmare very suitably titled, somehow made by a kid but at the same time is warped enough in the, where it's a little creepy. I admit, while it's not necessarily scary, it's creepy enough to keep you interested in what the hell's going on. I also like how it's on this boat thing because it feels really dark and your vision is constantly swaying, also contributing to that sense of like, holy shit, get me the fuck out of here. What stands out to me though is the monster design of this game. While I know that the monsters are just supposed to be people, each of them are so unique and I think it's the coolest thing ever. Roger's unusually long arms, the creepy twin chefs running around, the actual guests of the boat, and even the geisha women are so unique and unsettling in their own specific ways. Although I guess you could kind of say that the guests and the chef are more or less similar, but Roger and the geisha woman really stand out. Also the witch stands out too, it's still really well done. I wish I could talk about it more, but even when you look at the gameplay, this feels like an old picture book that you'd find in your elementary school library right beside scary stories to tell in the dark. I don't know why I said it like that, but that's okay. I think it's also worth mentioning level design, especially for the DLC, because they got really creative with fleshing out the environments, so it really helped make it feel like this great big ship with so much going on within it. The main story basically just had you running through it, but the DLC made you stop and appreciate how big the mob was and how tiny you feel inside of it. Regardless, I think that Little Nightmares was advertised on its unique style and I think it executes on it very well. 
I think this is one of those games that you don't even need to play. Just watching it lets you experience kind of the best atmospheric parts of it. But okay, let's talk about the time value because this was the biggest complaint when it was originally launched. So right now, as of recording this, Little Nightmares and its DLC, The Secrets of the Maw, can be bought for $37.48 on Steam. Right now it's on sale for $7.39. Hopefully you can get on that sale when this video comes out. On the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, it's $39.99, but it's also on sale for $9.99 if you catch the sale. On Xbox, it's currently at $34.99 or $8.74. As you can kind of tell, this game kind of goes on sale fairly frequently. So right off the bat, the big criticisms of the game were, ooh, it's too short. And for the main campaign, I 100% agree with that. It took me just around two and a half hours to finish all five stages of the main campaign. But for the Secrets of the Maw DLC, it actually took me longer, despite the fact that it was only about three levels. In total, my game time was just over five and a half hours for both Little Nightmares and the Secrets of the Maw. I think if you can get the complete collection for under $10, then you should buy this game. It's a fun experience, and it's honestly a great game if you have other people watching, whether or not it's on a stream or in your house. But of course, if you're just trying to save money, then just look up a Let's Play, because I think you get a lot of the same stuff uh, by just watching someone else do it too. And that's gonna wrap up this episode of spoilerful reviews for Little Nightmares and The Secrets of the Mob. I think this game was overlooked quite a bit upon first release just because of the whole time value thing, but I think the DLC was very well done and addressed a lot of these kind of issues. And with that, leave in the comments down below which game do you think was saved by its DLC? The original Destiny was not pretty great in my mind until The Taken King came out, so that's kind of the one that's like, the DLC saved it. Otherwise, you can watch me play all of these games live on Twitch, link down below. And that's gonna finish up this episode. So I'll catch you guys next time for another spoiler full reviews and thank you for tuning in. See you later.